In this video I'm going to show you several different liquid crystal display character displays and we're going to look at some simple code for driving them and connecting them to the Arduino. LCDs are very useful for displaying information about the program that's executing on your Arduino. The alternative is to send the data through the serial I.O. port to the PC where it can be displayed. The first way to set up a display is probably the easiest. We can attach a custom shield. These are shields that plug directly on top of the Arduino. They use quite a number of the pins on the Arduino, so if you're stacking multiple shields, you have to check that there's no conflict between the different shields that you're stacking on top of the Arduino. It's powered through the USB. This particular shield has five buttons connected to a single analog pin in a voltage divider configuration, which allows one analog pin to be used and to identify which individual button was pressed. You'll also notice that there's a potentiometer in the top left hand corner. This allows us to alter the contrast with a screwdriver. There's also a reset button that's carried up from the Arduino to make it accessible on the shield. Clearly you can see that this is a 16x2 display, so it has 20 columns by two rows, it's got a blue black light and it has a white LCD display. We now have to write the code to display the words display test on the first row of the Arduino and a number on the second row which increments as the loop function iterates on the Arduino code. So the code itself, in this case I'm using a new electronics display board. So I they have required that I use a different library which I've installed in the hardware Arduino hardware directory. It's called LCD 4-bit underscore mod library and we have to include it. So the first thing we do is include the header file for that library and then we have to initialize it by creating an object of the uh, LCD 4-bit mod uh, class or type and we call that LCD. The next thing we do is we create a temporary variable for the count and we also have a string for the conversion from the integral value into a string so that we can display it on the second row of the screen. In the setup function, which is the function that's called only once when the Arduino starts up, we call the init function of the LCD to initialize it. We then clear the display and place there's something already there, and we write the string display test to the first row. The next thing we have is the loop function. And this is a standard Arduino function that loops over and over and over again as fast as it can and continues to run as long as the Arduino is powered. The first thing we do inside this function is to move the cursor to the second row, the zeroth column of the second row, and then we use the i2a function, which is a standard Arduino function to convert an integer to a string. It takes the count value in the variable count count and converts it into a string output count, which we've allowed to be as long as 16 characters. We also then have to choose the base, so we choose base 10 to convert to an, a decimal value. Finally, we call the lcd.println function, which converts the string, or sends the string that we pass to the function to the display at the cursor position. Finally, we increment the integral value count by one, so count plus plus increments it by one, and then we loop again, converting it to a string and displaying it over and over again. I've altered this circuit just to show you that we can easily change it to count in base two by modifying the i2a function. So while the count value is in integral value and it counts in decimal, the i2a function then converts it into base two. So we can very easily change our counter to appear to count in base 2. Next I'm going to use a standard board that isn't on a shield and to do this I'm going to first solder uh, a male header to the pins of the um, display board. So I cut that header to length so it fits neatly into the into the, the holes of the display board and then I have to solder this so just prop up the display and then begin to solder. So to solder a board like this, you heat the front of the pin and try and apply the solder to the back of the pin. I'm using lead-free solder here that has the flux already in the solder. And you repeat this for each of the pins in the, in the array that you have to solder. So once this is done, you should have a very neat uh, solder connection. Use plenty of solder in this case because it's providing the structure for the connection as well. 
In this example, I'm using the JHD204A. This display's pinout is shown as in this figure here on the bottom right hand corner. You can see that pin 1 is VSS, which is connected to ground. Pin 2, VCC, is our supply, positive supply voltage, which we can connect to the 5 volt supply from the Arduino. Pin 3, VEE, is a pin that allows us to control the contrast of the display. And we control this by applying a voltage through the use of a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer, and I'll discuss that shortly. The fourth pin, or S, is our register select pin, which controls where an LCD memory that we're writing to. Pin 5, or W, is our read-write write pin that selects if we're in reading or writing mode. And pin 6 is the enable pin that enables us to write to the registers. It is possible for us to set the read-write pin to ground if we wish, and that would save one pin on our Arduino. The remaining pins, pin 7 through to pin 14, are the eight data pins that we're able to use to send the data to this display. Some displays allow you to use only four lines, and you can, you can get away with using only four bits, but in this case here, we're using 8-bit mode for our display. Pin 15 is our LED plus, so there's a backlight LED display on this display, which means that we have to power the LED. And some in some displays, you need to provide a current limiting resistor. If you do, wire it in as well. Pin 15 and pin 16 are the positive and negative pins of the LED display power. The next thing we need to do is write some code to display what we would like on the screen. And the way we can do this is actually quite straightforward thanks to the liquid crystal library that's provided with the Arduino environment and described at the Arduino website www.arduino.cc. So in our code the first thing we do is we hash include liquidcrystal.h to include the standard library and then we can create the display object by simply using one of the four available functions. We can either create a function with eight data pins or four data pins and we can decide whether or not we wish to include the RW pin or we wish to tie it to ground. So there's four possible combinations that we can use there. In the setup function we begin by defining how many rows and columns are in our display. So in this case it's a 20 column by 4 row display. It defaults to 0, 0, so the top left hand corner of the display and we can use the LCD print function to display a string on the screen. In the loop function in this case, I'm going to iterate, uh, iterate around and I'm going to display the number of milliseconds that have elapsed. And I'm going to divide that by 10 so I show the number of hundreds of a seconds that have elapsed since the last reset. To do this, we set the cursor at 0, 1, the zeroed column of the second row, and we repeatedly display the number of milliseconds divided by 10 that have elapsed since the Arduino reset at that position. So it displays over and over, and you can see here in our example the count going up. Another board that I'm using for this example is the Winstar WH1602B. It's a 16 column by 2 row board that has the exact same pinout as the JHD204A. We can solder pins onto the board and connect it in, into our breadboard as before. We can see that it's a blue uh, backlit display with white text and you can see there's a potentiometer to the right. The potentiometer is connected to plus 5 volts and to ground. And the wiper part that we adjust by rotating the screw moves and changes the voltage at the orange pin. So we can adjust the voltage at that pin which allows us to adjust the contrast to our display. And you can see here that one common problem when you wire these boards is that your, your 10K resistor, it might look like nothing is displaying, but really all you have to do is adjust the contrast when you get started. Here is another module. It's a data image, CM200-200 module, and it has pretty much the exact same pinout as the previous modules, with the exception that the pins are on the left-hand side. I have soldered female header to this board so that we can wire it directly to our breadboard using simple wire connections. The pins are ordered from right to left, bottom to top as we look at it here, and we just simply connect it into our breadboard. It's an inverse display, 
So the, te the backlight comes through the text and you can see by adjusting the contrast that it's very easy again that it'll look like the display isn't working if the contrast is setting correctly. Here's an example of a display module, a JHD162A, and in this case the backlight has died. So you can see that the text isn't very clear at all on the display. So if you're getting this symptom, it's likely that you're, you've, you've damaged your backlight. This is the final display module that I'm going to look at. It's a YJ802A. It's an 8x2 display, and it has 14 pins because there's no LED backlight. In this case here, I'm just soldering on a few male headers onto the display. And because it's in a two-row format, I find it's best to use a short, a small breadboard to align the pins so they don't, that they don't get crooked. So I put a space underneath and align the pins so that they're, they're perpendicular and aligned. And then I simply solder across all the pins. Again, applying the solder to the back of the pin and the heat to the front of the pin. So do all this for all 14 pins. It's a little bit tight because of the... Um, this display sticks up in the air. So there you can see the male headers soldered onto the board. The next thing we do is just modify the code that we wrote previously. We can still use the liquid crystal, the standard liquid crystal library. The only thing we have to do is modify in our setup function and change the LCD begin to have eight columns and two rows. Once we do that we can use the same code. So here's this little breadboard working with the same application. You can see there's no backlight, so you have to orient it against the sunlight so you can see it properly. I've also used a little bit of ribbon cable to connect. It's very difficult to connect pairs of pins into a breadboard because you short across the pairs. So a little bit of ribbon cable, and then I've connected at the far end, used male connection cables to connect it into our breadboard. So hopefully that has given you a good introduction into the use of displays that you can attach to your Arduino for your own projects.